All right. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Let's all stand and grab a maroon song book. Page 23, there is a fountain. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath the flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains the dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his day and there may i through vile as he wash all my sins away wash all my sins away wash all my sins away and there may I through while as he wash all my sins away. Ere since by faith I seal the stream that flowing wounds supply. Redeeming love has been my theme and I shall be till I die, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die. Redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die. Amen. Remain standing for prayer. All right, good singing. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, as you can notice, there's a platform that's partially missing. It's not completely missing. Uh, hopefully it's completely missing soon so uh, we can rebuild, but we're looking forward to that, having a new platform. The goal is by Mother's Day. That's the goal. So I think we can make it happen. I've got some... Uh, uh, steps coming in and all that stuff, so we should be able to get it together by Mother Day, Mother's Day. But be praying for that. Uh, we're glad you're here. Is there someone who can open us up in a word of prayer? Rick Lamoth. That would be great. Amen. Remain standing for one more song. I believe it's page 55. How many people are going to be there when the roll is called? Amen. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder 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 i'll be there on the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his church on oath shall gather over on the other strife I'll be there when the roll is called.
called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder 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 i'll be there amen you may be seated all right good singing even jared jared good singing thank you all right good well it's good to be here this evening uh just a few announcements before we get rolling uh we do have some upcoming events um this saturday is the church cleaning day and I think I'm trying to make sure we've got something to do on the church cleaning day. So uh, we'll have lots and lots to do here. Um, I actually will not be here for it. I'm leaving tomorrow. And uh, I'll be back Sunday afternoon. So I'll be uh, getting in. I got permission from Pastor Sinoreski and all that. So um, I'm going to be uh, going home, mowing my lawn back in Connecticut, you know, things like that. The grass is going, growing up in Connecticut. So... I got a list of things to do down there, um, but I'll be up for Sunday afternoon. Pastor Sinoreski will be flying in this Friday, uh, the, uh, I believe it's 8 p.m., and I believe Jared's picking him up, right? 8.30, very good. Uh, so pray for that, pray for his safe travels. I know he's been busy. I've been in pretty close communication with him while he's been gone. Uh, we do have our youth ministry starting up on Wednesday, April 24th. That's going to meet at 3.15 right after school gets out, and it's going to go till the end of the Wednesday night service. Um, we're looking for some, I'm going to be leading it, but we'd like to have some other adults present and helping out with it. I think that'd be great if we had a team effort. Um, so if you're interested in that, let me know after service. Uh, then also, on April 28th, uh, we've got our Give It All Sunday. That's the closing day for that. So we're uh, just give it all, um, any, uh, what we're encouraging you to do, and you pray about this and seek the Lord on it, but uh, pray and ask the Lord if He lets you give, you give a whole paycheck to the Lord. So uh, whatever that means for you, uh, it, I'd encourage you to give that to the Lord. And this is not just for old people. These are not just for you know, younger people. This is for everybody. So uh, if you're a five-year-old and you get a dollar allowance, Pray to the Lord and ask the Lord what God wants you to give. Uh, and then coming up on May 3rd and 4th, we have our ladies' conference. Uh, that's going to be at Pastor Bell's church. And if you have any questions, see Cindy Hall about that. Then May 5th, we're going to kick off our Sunday school program. Uh, so we're ramping up here, getting everything going again. It's going to be exciting. Uh, so be in prayer for that. And I know some have been uh, spoken to about being Sunday school teachers. So we're just uh, Sunday schools for everybody. Uh, so whether you're 2 or 92, it's for you. There's a class for you, and it'll be something that'll help you. Um, when we preach, uh, preaching is geared towards the heart. But when we teach, teaching is geared towards the head. And there's things that can be accomplished in a Sunday school room uh, that could never be accomplished on a platform be behind the pulpit uh, and vice versa. So both are important, and we want to uh, put an emphasis on that Sunday morning Sunday school. All right, well, open up your Bibles to the book of uh, Proverbs, book of Proverbs. Usually, I have a nice, con concise one-page outline, and I have this huge pulpit to put that one-page outline, and then today I got a little tiny pulpit and a three-page outline. So, uh, Proverbs chapter 18, go to verse 14, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. Okay. 
Title of the message tonight, oh, let me get here too. Title of the message tonight is Healing a Wounded Spirit. Healing a Wounded Spirit. Uh, let's start reading Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. The Bible says, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Let's open in a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you very much for your word. I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. Thank you for each one here that's gathered together out of a love for you. I pray that you meet our spiritual needs this evening. I pray that you'd move uh, through the preaching. I pray that you'd strengthen people with your word. I pray that you'd give us wisdom and understanding on this matter of a wounded spirit. I pray that if we're personally wounded, Lord, I pray that you give us uh, help us out with that and help us find healing in you. Uh, for those who uh, maybe they're not afflicted by it at all, but maybe there's somebody that they know that's struggling with that, Lord. I pray that you'd help us to be sensitive and to be helping others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, many years ago now, I think it was 13 years ago, I was down in college, and it was the beginning of my year in college down in North Carolina, and I had a friend who was close friends with somebody out in uh, Bob Jones in South Carolina. So I, uh, one weekend, we decided we're going to go hang out together. So we got in a car and went down there, and I met this guy. And uh, his dad was in charge of a ministry, and he called it Wounded Spirits. Uh, he dealt a lot with military people coming off the battlefield, a lot of PTSD, uh, things like that. And the title of his ministry was that Wounded Spirits ministry. And I, I got to thinking about that as a teenager and thought about how helpful that could be and uh, as I've grown up and I've gotten older, you see it as a more and more necessary ministry. Uh, what is a wounded spirit? Here in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14, it makes a little bit of a contrast here. Uh, it says, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. So that spirit, we're, we're a tripartite being. We're uh, made in the, in the image of God. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. That spirit is our innermost being. And that spirit is something that's made alive upon salvation. The Bible says we're quickened, which means made alive. And our spirit beareth witness with his spirit, the Holy Spirit, that we are the children of God. Uh, our spirit is a very important thing. When we uh, die and you go to a funeral and you might see somebody die at the... Well, you won't see him die. You'll see a, a, a body there. Uh, you'll see that person's body at the funeral but their spirit's gone. You, just, you look at them and they're just, well, you can tell it's the same person, but they're not there. They're, they're somewhere else. And that spirit goes on to live with the Lord. Uh, well, as we're going through life, we can suffer from a wounded spirit. The Bible says that when somebody is afflicted physically, let's say somebody got injured, perhaps they lost a leg or they lost an arm or uh, some injury like that, maybe they got very sick and uh, they were physically weak. That person's spirit, if that person's spirit is strong, it will sustain the person. I think of a friend that I grew up with. Uh, we're teenagers together, and uh, this girl, later on, she went off to college, and um, she fell off of a third-story balcony while she was in college, and she became uh, paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, now, we were friends, and she was a very active person. Uh, she would hike Mount Washington several times a year, and uh, they just very athletic person, very active person. Uh, but after she was injured, uh, she was paralyzed from the waist down. That meant no more hiking. That meant no more traveling. Not all the stuff that she did, she couldn't do it anymore. Uh, but she was a very strong person, and uh, she got involved in wheelchair competitions and uh, Special Olympics type stuff, and she's now a, a public speaker. She goes around and she helps people that are struggling through that. Uh, half of her body was not functioning anymore. Uh, she was paralyzed from the waist down, but her spirit was strong, and she was able to continue even though her body had been afflicted. That's what this verse is talking about in the first part of the verse. In the second part of the verse, it says, but a wounded spirit who can bear that means we may look perfectly fine, we may seem perfectly healthy, we may, uh, as you look at somebody, you may say there's nothing wrong with that person. Uh, they seem like a perfectly normal, fine person. But if that person has a wounded spirit inside, it's very, very difficult to keep going. 
And that wounded spirit is something that can, that can kick us to the sidelines in the Christian life. It can hold us back. It can keep us, uh, keep us from going forward and growing in the Lord. Um, I'll, I did a, quite a bit of study on this verse, frankly, because I didn't have a really good understanding on it uh, before I started studying it. So I spent quite a bit of time studying and reading different commentaries on it. There's basically uh, three things, or two main things, that are the cause of this wounded spirit. Uh, and we'll see some different verses as we go throughout the Bible. Uh, but before we do that, let me read a few summaries that some uh, previous preachers had written. Uh, Ellicott, who, who has a, um, a commentary series, he says of this verse, he says, This first man is one whose spirit draws strength from God. The second is one which retires itself to nerf its griefs after being injured. Uh, that, that person who's got a wounded spirit, they've uh, allowed themselves to be consumed with nursing their own wounds, licking their wounds. You ever see a dog that uh, maybe got injured and they're just sitting there licking their wounds over and over and over again? And they may spend days and weeks and months doing that. Uh, well, that's the idea behind this verse. Um, also, I want to read this. It's from the pulpit commentary. Uh, talking about the, the spirit in this verse, it says, But taking the spirit in the highest sense is the trichotomy of human nature. That's the body, soul, and spirit. We see an in intimation that the grace of God, the supernatural infusion of his presence, is that which strengthens the man and makes him able to endure with patience. Uh, and then he goes on and he talks a little bit more about that, but... Uh, that spirit that we have, we get our strength from the Lord. And when somebody's gotten to a point where they have a wounded spirit, and that many, many people go through this, and uh, there may be people in this auditorium, and you look back at your life and you say, you know, there was a time in my life where I struggled with a wounded spirit. It may have been months or years that you struggled through it. Maybe you're still struggling with it. Uh, that's a very common thing that we go through in our Christian lives uh, if we're struggling with that, uh, we need to figure out how to heal. Uh, some things never heal. Uh, I think of um, uh, Pastor Bish was preaching at the uh, was one of the preachers at the conference I went to this past week. But uh, he's he lost his leg, and he's friends with another preacher down in Connecticut, Pastor Vasic, who also lost a leg. They both lost a leg through different means. Uh, Pastor Bish had cancer in his bone and they had to remove his leg that way. But Pastor Vasek, uh, he was walking on a beach one day and he stepped on a sea urchin. And that wound became infected. And because of the spot that it was and where he was, they couldn't really treat it. So the wound just festered and they ended up having to amputate a little bit. And they had to amputate a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And before you know it, his whole leg is missing. Uh, because it just couldn't get to a point where it could heal. That wound just kept festering and festering and festering, and they could never get that under control. As a Christian, we don't want to allow that to happen to us spiritually. We want to find healing from the Lord. Uh, Jeremiah refers to the Lord as the balm of Gilead. Uh, he says, is there not a balm in Gilead? Uh, and our Lord is a God who's the great physician, both physically but also spiritually. And he's able to heal us from things that have, we've gone through in our lives. A wounded spirit can come from a few different sources. Uh, one is personal sin uh, and guilt from that personal sin. Someone may ask forgiveness for their sin and get that right with God, and yet they still struggle with months and years later the guilt from that sin. Uh, God uses His Holy Spirit to convict us of sin, to get us right with Him. But Satan will guilt us with the past to keep us from walking with the Lord. There's a difference from the Holy Spirit's conviction and the guilt that we feel from sin. And God, after when we confess our sins to the Lord and we get things right with the Lord, God's able to forgive that sin. Uh, the song we sang talked about uh, there's power in the blood, and that blood 
washes away all our sin. And after we sin as a Christian, we can get that right with God and we can get forgiveness from the Lord. But Satan's got a very good tactic of being the accuser of the brethren. Uh, that's one of his titles in Scripture. And Satan will elbow it and bring, uh, elbow you and, and mention, hey, you remember when that happened in the past? You can't serve God. You can't get past that. that. That's something that you can't overcome. He'll guilt us over and over and over and over again about a sin that God has long since forgiven us for. See, that's one source of a wounded spirit. Another source of a wounded spirit is being discouraged by other people's sin. That happens commonly when we get our eyes off the Lord. We get our eyes on other people. You know, every single person here, we're all sinners. Every single one. And when we get our eyes on people, uh, we will get discouraged. Guaranteed, if we take our eyes off the Lord and focus on other people, we will get discouraged and we will wind up with a wounded spirit. Every single time. Uh, at some point, everybody's going to let you down to some extent. And we can get a wounded spirit with that. Also tied in, and I, I, I believe for me this is one of those messages that I'm going to be developing throughout my life a little bit. And 10 years from now, I'll probably be able to preach this a lot better. Um, but uh, tied in with that wounded spirit is a, an angry spirit. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. These two things are tied together, uh, dealing with anger and having a wounded spirit. Uh, the Bible has a lot to say about a wounded spirit. And I'm just going to read you some of these verses here. And I don't think these are going to be on the screen. Uh, Proverbs cha or Psalm chapter 34, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Psalm chapter 51 verse 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Proverbs 15 13 says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. Proverbs 17 verse 22 a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. Uh, it's very evident through the Bible that someone's spirit can be affected by what they go through. And it can hinder them and it can hurt them in life. Uh, Proverbs 17 verse 22, it says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I was talking with Brother Job, and we were talking about one person that I knew, and I said, I believe that guy, he's probably the godliest person I've ever met. And another thing about him, you can't help but be encouraged when you're around this guy. I mean, he is just so unbelievably encouraging. Uh, you just can't help but be joyful around the guy. He's got that joy of the Lord. He's got an extra dose of it too. Uh, but it says, a broken spirit drieth up the bones. And uh, doctors have sensed this kind of an interesting side fact, but doctors have made a correlation between uh, certain bone diseases and the uh, what a person's going through um, in, with anxiety and, and worry and things like that. Uh, kind of an interesting side note. But we have this, this broken spirit. How do you heal a broken spirit? How do you heal a wounded spirit? How do you get past that? Uh, it's important to notice that uh, as we struggle with a wounded spirit or if someone else is struggling with a wounded spirit, it's important that we know that one of our goals as a Christian is to help other people heal. And I think this is very interesting. If we go to Luke chapter 22, verse 32, uh, actually verse 31, I'll start there. Uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 31, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee and thy, that thy faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. This is an interesting uh, thing to study out. Satan, uh, this is Peter, when Peter proclaimed to the Lord that uh, he'll not deny the Lord. And 
uh, Peter later on denied the Lord. And the Lord said to him, I've prayed for you that thy faith fail not. You know, if someone here has a wounded spirit, know this, that there's an advocate that we have with God the Father. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died for us on the cross, the one who loves us. And he's there advocating on our behalf to God the Father. The Lord is praying for us as we go through tribulations, as we go through difficulties. Then it says this, And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So the Lord's saying, hey, hey, when you get that strength, when you get through this, now I want you to take this and I want you to focus on strengthening the brethren. Uh, in the not too distant future from when this verse was written, when the, when the Lord said this, uh, the disciples would be scattered because Jesus would die on the cross and they would flee up to Galilee and they would meet the Lord later up there in Galilee and there were each one of them were struggling with a wounded spirit. Uh, this was something challenging that they did not expect. Uh, and the Lord gave Peter this special job. He says, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. It's important that we understand as a Christian, one of the ministries that we have is to strengthen those people that have a wounded spirit. Uh, when you read about the Lord, and every time you... Uh, I don't have time to read all the passages here, but... Every time you, you talk about, you see in the Bible it talking about a contrite or a wounded spirit, uh, what you'll see is you'll see a focus on the Lord. And I'll read one for an example. Isaiah 41 verse 10. The Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Uh, God, every time we focus on the Lord, we're going to get strength. And when somebody has that wounded spirit, it's like somebody being weak and feeble. Maybe somebody not having the strength to get up or the strength to walk around or the strength to do what they would normally be able to do. Well, that strength that we get for that wounded spirit comes from the Lord. How do you get that? Number one, put a focus on the Lord. I think when you, when you study prayer in the Bible, much of prayer has to do with praise about the Lord. Uh, think about the model prayer that we have in the book of Matthew. It starts off with, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The beginning of prayer is to start with praise. And praise is one of the key things to healing a wounded spirit. When somebody has a wounded spirit, you know, when we get discouraged, when we get down, we start focusing on how everything around us is terrible, how our lives are so bad and we're just, everything's falling apart. Well, when we start learning how to praise the Lord, it's amazing how that changes our outlook. Uh, sometimes when I'm discouraged, I'll just be like, you know, Lord, I know you're a good God. I know you're a God of love. I know you're a God of mercy. I know you're a God of peace. And I'll just go down the list. And sometimes I don't feel like going down the list. And I, I'm, I'm making a checklist. I'm saying, Lord, what, who are you? Who is the God that I have? And I'll go down the list of all the things to praise the Lord for. And then I'll, I'll go through my own life. Lord, thank you for how you've blessed me. And you've given me a home. And you've given me a job. You've given me a family. You've given me friends. You've given me possessions. You've given me health. And we can just go on and on and on about the Lord. Not just praising the Lord, but also counting our blessings. That's a key to overcoming a wounded spirit. Also, not just, i got to find my place here in my notes, not just praise, but also patience. Uh, there's a saying out there, it says, time heals all wounds. Well, I don't know if that's really true, but I think in this situation, time is a very necessary thing. Some things just take time to heal. I remember when I was 17 years old and... I got into an accident with my dirt bike and had to have a little surgery on my leg and I was laid up all summer long. You would think that once I got the medical care that I needed, the next day I'd be fine and I'd be walking around, but no. I spent all summer laying on a couch. Uh, the summer before my senior year of high school, uh, from June 22nd, I, I took a spill on my dirt bike on my birthday. From June 22nd all the way till the time I started school in August, I was laying on the couch much of that time, and then I was hobbling around. Why? Because it took time to heal. 
You know, if somebody has a wounded spirit and we say, okay, well, Lord, I'm going to focus on you and I'm going to spend one night and I'm just going to read my Bible and pray, that's a good thing. But healing a wounded spirit takes time. And it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it takes time for us to, to learn and grow through all the struggles, to process everything, to understand why the Lord allowed this in our life. Yeah, I believe the Lord is all-powerful. I believe the Lord is in control of every circumstance on this earth. Now, I don't think he's, he's necessarily um, uh, you know, encouraging every circumstance. I don't think that's the truth at all. But I do believe that Lord, the Lord... Uh, allows Satan to work, but Satan can only work under the Lord's permission. Uh, if you go back to Job, and we learn a lot about how Satan operates with the Lord through the book of Job. How's jo how Satan has to ask permission from the Lord to allow, for God to allow Satan to afflict uh, one of his own people. And God always does that through, with a purpose. If you read through the book of Job, and actually, Job is a very good book to read if you're struggling with a wounded spirit. If you read through the book of Job, um, there's a completely different outlook to Job in the beginning of the book than the end of the book. Uh, the end of the book, you see a, a new sense of humility in the life of Job. You see how the Lord changed him and the Lord worked on him and the Lord drew him through the whole book. And yet, you think about the friends that Job had. Don't be a friend like Job's friends. Uh, if you know somebody with a wounded spirit, don't just beat up on them, uh, encourage them. I think it's very interesting. I was reading part of the book of Job for this passage. Uh, there's this one verse, Job chapter 16, verse 5. Uh, Job, actually I'll read verse 1 first, chapter 16, verse 1 of Job. The Bible says, Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Imagine being a friend and you're trying to help your friend and they just look at you and say, you are a miserable comforter. Well, those are the friends that Job had. If you skip down to verse 5, it says uh, that Job is telling them what he would do if he was in their situation to try and comfort him. Job says, if I were you, he says, but I would strengthen you with my mouth and the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. Job says, this is what I would do if I were in your shoes, if I were trying to encourage me. I would use the words out of my mouth to strengthen you. And I would use that to assuage your grief. But instead, Job's friends were just picking at the wound. They were reopening an old wound over and over and over again. Um, number one, how do we overcome a wounded spirit? Number one, praise. Number two, patience. Time heals all wounds, it's, as the saying goes. Number three, purpose. It's important that we understand that there's a purpose in all of this and that we have a purpose. Uh, I think many people who struggle, they get discouraged and they get wounded and they just sit by the sidelines. One of the things that you'll notice is they've lost their purpose. They no longer have that purpose. They've allowed Satan to derail them in some way from the purpose that God has for them. And when you go through something and you realize, you know, this is all for a purpose, you know, suddenly it makes it all bearable. Uh, I've been through some difficult things in my life. And, and once I figure out, you know, this is for a purpose, it becomes bearable. If you go on a diet, diets are miserable. I hate diets. You know, those, it's bad, bad. I want to eat all the fatty things and sweet things that I can get my hands on. But when you're on a diet, you've got to eat things that you don't necessarily like eating. And you got to not eat things that you would normally like eating. And it's painful, but the idea of, you know, it's, uh, you know I'm going to feel so good when I get skinny. You know, that, that, that purpose in your mind, that'll help you with that. Well, if we have a purpose and understand the purpose that God has for us, when we go through difficult trials, that'll help us get through it. How to heal a wounded spirit. Number one, praise. Number two, patience. And number three, purpose. Um, like I said, I think, um, you know, another 10 years, I'll be a lot better at preaching this message. But I just kind of dug in the scriptures today, spent quite a bit of time studying on it, and um, I hope it's a blessing to you. And, uh, you know, it's, hopefully it's something that I'll develop through the rest of my life here. Uh, how to heal a wounded spirit. It's a very, very important topic. 
There's a lot in Scripture about it. There's a lot of Scripture that we just didn't have time to turn to in this message. But it's a great study, studying a wounded spirit. Well, let's close in a word of prayer. And if God's spoken to your heart for today, I'd encourage you just do business in your seats. We're not going to have an altar call just because uh, you might get a tetanus or something if you come kneel at the altar. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you very much for... Uh, the, the good God that you are, I thank you that you're a God that cares about each and every single one of us. I thank you that you're a God who does understand that there's times in our lives where we get hurt spiritually, Lord, and our spirit is wounded. Uh, I pray that you'd help us through those times. And you've promised to be a God that is faithful through those times. You've promised to be a God that uh, strengthens and heals. You are that balm in Gilead, Lord. And I pray that each one, if there's anyone here who is struggling with a wounded spirit, I pray that they would find their solution in you, Lord. And I pray that you'd uh, grant them uh, victory over that. And I pray that you'd encourage them and help them go through that difficult time in their life. And I pray that as each one of us, we go throughout our Christian lives, I pray that you'd help each one of us uh, to be sensitive uh, to other spiritual needs, Lord. And I pray that you would help us to be a, a good comforter to those who may be struggling with a wounded spirit, Lord. I pray that you'd help us each to have a better understanding of this topic. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You can look this way. Uh, we're going to move right into our prayer time. And um, I've got a prayer request to add. My aunt out in Ohio is uh, going to be having a hip replacement. And she's got a bad chest infection right now. So they postponed the hip replacement once. And 
Uh, she's just praying to overcome that chest infection so she could have the surgery. Uh, so keep that in prayer if you would. Her name is Aunt Claire. Um, is there any other request? Yes, Brother Hall? Okay. You're going to Vermont on Friday? All right, very good. All right, pray for the Halls. They're going to Vermont on Friday. Um, Bob called me before the service, Bob Balfour, and um, he asked for prayer. Uh, one of the waitresses at Uncle Moe's that's very good friends with, um, with his wife, Tony, uh, asked for prayer. Her ex-husband is trying to get full custody of their kids, and uh, she's asking for prayer about that. They said our church would pray for her, so uh, pray for that. I don't know if she's saved, so uh, keep her, uh, pray for that as well. Uh, her name is Amber. Amber. All right, any others? Yes? Mm -hmm. um, Josie's got a cousin, uh, who we are getting text about this just a couple days ago, uh, who got into a very, very severe bike accident, and he broke more than just his arm, right? Uh -huh. It was just his arm? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, from the initial text, I thought it was... Um, more than just the arm. Okay, gotcha. All right, and what's his name? Luke. Pray for Luke, a uh, relative of the Moretz. Uh, got into a very bad bike accident and uh, badly, in a very bad way, broke his arm. Uh, so he may, lose feel, he may lose the use of his arm. So be in prayer for Luke that he'd heal from that bike accident. And this bike was a pedal bike, right? Yeah, he's like 14 or so, 13, okay, yeah, pray for Luke, he's, he's just a young teenager, so pray for him, well, that's a pretty severe, traumatic thing to go through for a 13 year old, all right, yes? Wow. Wow. Pray for Rachel. She's uh, been sick now for the past month and with a fever, right, for the whole month. And uh, it's to the point now where it's affecting specific organs that she has, like her liver and her spleen. Uh, so pray that the doctors figure out what's going on. If there's some infection, they can figure out what's causing it and fix it. All right, very good. Any others? Uh, yeah, Jared? Okay. You know, if I was a kid and I knew how good peanuts were and peanut butter and peanut butter ice cream, I would, that would be a major goal in my life, to not be allergic to peanuts. If I was allergic to peanuts, I might die. I, I'd probably just die. So uh, pray for her and uh, pray that that does work out for her, that she can eat peanuts once again because I'll tell you, I hope she doesn't know what she's missing. Wow. Wow, she's pretty severe. Yes. That's scary. Uh, five guys can kill you when you're that type of person. That's scary. So. Yeah, we got prayers with Bob Markey. He was in surgery today for a heart complication and lungs. He's been in and out now for quite a while. But he's hanging in there. My uh, sister, uh, sister's husband, in the quad, and I got another sister and some 
Okay. Uh, so Bob Marquis, heart complications? Heart and lung. Heart and lung. Okay. Bob Marquis is Bob, is it your brother-in-law? My sister's husband. Okay. Your sister's husband. Okay. Good. Yeah. Pray for Bob Marquis, one of Bob Deshane's uh, relatives. It's his sister's husband. Uh, has heart and lung complications. So keep him in your prayer. He's down in Florida right now. Uh, and I don't think I mentioned over to loudspeaker that Kelsey Blake, uh, we're praying for uh, her testing results, right? Yes. All right, very good. Any others? All right, very good. Uh, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, get together with somebody if you can and spend some time in prayer with them.